Lecture 3 starting with metric. We will be using metric and SI system measurements all year. Everybody uses them but the United States, so as scientists, we measure in the metric system. If you guys remember from chem or have taken physics or AP physics, you know we metric. Kilograms and meters and all of that good stuff, so we're going to metric in here. They're used for scientific measurements, but the SI system, Système International de Unités, it's French, I took Spanish, that's why I've been told I read French like a redneck. So, there you go. This is a system of measurement that was designed specifically for the needs of scientists. From what I gather, it was a whole bunch of old men piled up arguing about which specific unit of measurement is best for them. In most cases, it came up the same as metric. But not always. The first one has an asterisk beside it, mass, because of this. Four SI units. Mass is in the kilogram, not the gram, which is kg. In the metric system, it's the gram. Regardless, we measure length in meters, which are m, and time is in seconds. This is really awkward because Honestly, if I'm talking about this class being 42 minutes long, I should do 42 times 60 and report it as kiloseconds. Isn't that fun? Most people don't. Temperature for my SI units are Kelvin, and somewhere along the line, I have a nerd note that if you call it degrees Kelvin, the nerds are going to make fun of you. There's no degree sign with this. It's just Kelvin. Amount? Oh, yes. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. It's mole, and this is great. We abbreviate mole as M-O-L, but we don't abbreviate molecule, which is nine letters long. Thank you. Not my fault. These bottom two are more physics-y, but are included sort of for completeness. For current, we may get to current at the end of the year, and it's in amperes, or amps, if you know anything about fuses and electrical work. You've probably seen that. Luminous intensity is a really fancy way to say how bright something is. It's used occasionally with current, and it's also used with stars. It's an astronomy kind of thing. And we call it the candela from Candle Power, abbreviated CD. Bottom note, differ where metric is mass, differ from metric where mass is in grams, and temperature is in degrees Celsius for metric. We've got some commonly used metric prefixes up next. How about this? How about that's what happens when you work from home. All right, they're ready to go. So what we've got here and their meaning. I abbreviate kilo as K, 10 to the third. Kilometers are pretty normal in terms of metric measurement. If you run track or cross country, kilometers are old news. Deci, D, it's going to be 10 to the first. Sorry, 10 to the negative first. As I said that, I was thinking deca. We don't use hecto and deca very much, so I didn't put them in here. Deci is D with 10 to the negative 1. Centi, 10 to the negative 2. Milli, 10 to the negative 3. And millimeters are like centimeters and millimeters make sense. Milliliters make sense. Those are real units that actually we've seen. After that, we get a little bit small. And actually, your book included two large ones that I didn't, so I'll give you those also. Micro. We'll be looking at microns and micrometers coming up with light. It's 10 to the negative sixth. Nano, definitely big. The light we see has wavelengths in nanometers. It's at, by the way, that weird U-looking thing is the Greek letter mu. If you want to see a better one, Google it. Mu. Nanometers are 10 to the negative ninth. And picometers, oh so tiny, we look at these with atomic radii as 10 to the negative 12th meters. We are way more concerned with little than big in most cases in chemistry, but your textbook included mega and giga for two of your questions. Mega is going to be capital M, and it is 10 to the 6th, not negative 6th, and giga, capital G, the bigger ones tend to be capitalized, 10 to the 9th. So there you go for your metric prefixes. They're in the book. Some of the questions in the big packet have you looking at those. Difference between mass and weight is another picky nerd thing. Mass is how a measurement of the amount of matter in something. And weight is how much gravity of a planet pulls on it. So if you're not planning on leaving Earth, they're the same thing. Good. If you're planning on leaving Earth, 
your weight will change, but your mass will not. If I go to the moon, my weight is a sixth of what it is on Earth, but my mass hasn't changed. I have the same amount of matter, but the amount gravity pulls on it is different because the moon is much smaller than Earth. So you get a sixth of your weight. And that's why the men and women that go out there bounce around like bunnies in their spacesuits because the gravity of the moon is less. Converting among temperature scales, this is annoying, but you need to be able to do it. You can always use your calculator. And basically what you're doing, you'll see with the problems, I'm going to set them up. If you're going from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you're going to multiply by 1.8 and add 32. If you're going from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you subtract 32 and divide by 1.8. You'll see other ways to do it, and your calculator may even have this programmed in if you've got the big boy calculator. So let's do a couple. We got 100 degrees Celsius going to Fahrenheit. So what I want to do here is 1.8 times 100 minus 32. Sorry, plus 32. There we go. 1.8 times 100 plus 32. We'll do one each with the fair. Oh, I guess you don't have that many. So if you want to pause and do these on your own, go ahead. These, I think, are a little tougher because you don't do them very often. So if you want to walk through them with me, you're good. So I got 180 plus 32 gave me 212 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the one I always do to check. In my brain, I know that water boils at 100 Celsius, water boils at 212 Fahrenheit, and if I can't remember the conversion, I do that. That's my go-to. For 60 Fahrenheit to Celsius, I have a decimal after the 60, indicating I want two significant digits in the answer. Don't worry, we're going to review. So for this one, I'll do 60 minus 32, Fahrenheit minus 32, because remember Celsius is little, divided by 1.8. This shouldn't be that many. I get an answer here of 16 degrees Celsius. I rounded. It was 15 point something. 37 Celsius to Kelvin. When you're going Celsius to Kelvin, you need to be able to do this one. Celsius plus 273 is Kelvin. So for 37 Celsius, which is body temperature, Plus 273, I get 310 Kelvin. No degree symbol with Kelvin because the nerds will laugh at you. If I'm going Fahrenheit to Kelvin, I need to go to Celsius first. So if I'm going Fahrenheit to Celsius in this next one, I do 80 minus 32 divided by 1.8. And no, I'm not doing these in my head. That's there on paper. I can see them. When I do this, I then, I may as well just do it all in one step. I'm going to add 273 to my answer. Because that goes to Celsius, and then that to Kelvin. I end up with 300 Kelvin for my answer there. Those, There's one of those on the test for this, I promise. We'll take those once you get back, once we start schooling. But as far as your summer assignment goes, I know you probably haven't done much with these, so there they are. A couple more things. Derived units. Derived units are big. Derived units are how you can tell if you're getting your right answers, honestly. Because if the units you are using in your variables, in your values, will cancel out with your desired unit, you did it right. It took me to halfway through physics in college to really get how big of an almost cheat that is. Paying attention to the units you have is important because you can tell if you've assembled the numbers you're given correctly. We'll see how when we talk about density. What a derived unit is. They're units obtained from combining two or more SI units. My examples for multiplication for volume. Volume of, say, let's think. I don't know. Volume of anything. If I'm doing a volume of a cube, how much space is in there? I probably want length times width times height for volume. If it's meters times meters times meters, I'm going to get meters cubed. I mushed them all together. The same thing would be true if they were different measurements, like meters and something else will multiply. You would just write them out. Like this, dividing. If I'm talking about speed, I want to know how many meters something travels per second. Meters per second for speed or velocity, depending if it's got a direction or if it's just your scalar or vector. Um, meters per second slash mark for a divided unit. And if I'm doing both, my Newton, 
Newton is a measurement of force, and it talks about how much gravity pulls on mass. So what it is is acceleration due to gravity multiplied by my kilogram of Newton is a combination. It's kilogram times meter divided by second squared. So for density, density is important. We'll play a lot with density coming up in these notes. My equation for density is going to be density equals mass over volume. If you see the density triangle, there it is. I had a kid the first year I taught modern science show me the density triangle, and I was like, that's super cool. Cover the one that you're not given. So if I want to solve for density, I cover D, M over V. If I want to solve for volume, mass over density. If I want to solve for mass, density times volume. Love it. The density triangle. My units on density are usually going to be, for this class, a mass in grams and a volume in either milliliters or centimeters cubed. So when I do a derived unit, since I'm doing mass divided by volume, my density will be grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter. Pretty nice. So calculate in your packet. Go for it. Calculate the density of a metal object with a mass of 95 grams and a volume of 5 mil. I'll do two. Pause if you want. I got 95 grams, which is my mass. I know grams is a mass. It's my metric unit. It's not my SI unit. We can still use it. My volume, 5.0 milliliters. 95 divided by 5.0. Two significant digits in each. I ended up with 19 for my numerical answer. Combining my units, grams per milliliter, all good. If I wanted you to tell me if this float ed or sink did, if it floats or sinks, you compare its density to the density of water. Water has a density of 1 gram per milliliter or 1 gram per cubic centimeter. If you're over 1, you sink. If you're under 1, you float. Way over 1 sinks. It's also a metal, which is a good hint that it'll usually be a freebie. Metals will sink. Metals are more dense than water. A cork will float on water while an iron block will sink. I gave you a list of some densities in the packet. Check them out. There you go.